Hi, right, what's up, savages? So today I'm going to show you how to insert a 3D model into a, a picture. Let's see here, camera view, render, bam. And over here I have the, uh, the rendered image. Uh, but first I want to give a shout out to uh, tutor for you for teaching me how to do this. It's got a YouTube channel, nice, calm, soothing voice, lots of tutorials about Blender and other software as well. Here's his video, uh, how to make a mug. And here's a video where he inserts an image there. Then he has these two mugs there. This guy's super talented, uh, except this version that he has here of Blender is 2.79. And I'm going to make a newer version for a 2.8. Uh, here we go, HTML. He has lots of stuff. I love this guy's voice. There's this cool teddy bear you can make in Blender. All right, so let's get started. So here I have a mug that I made earlier. And so now uh, I need to get a picture. I want to get a picture to go in here. So here's a picture that I found in um, Pexels, pexels.com. Uh, free pictures, free videos. So I'm going to type in table. And I want to get a picture of a table to put the, the mug on there, something with the shadow, and not too many shadows. Uh, this one here, that's cool, has a reflection there. I can use a screen space, re, screen space reflections to reflect it. This one, I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell where the shadow's at, where the shadow would be. There's a lot of sunlight. Uh, you're gonna want to go with an image with one light source. This one's cool. It looks like the light just hits go straight that way. That one's not bad. This one, I don't know where the shadows at. There's kind of like a blurry shadow there. It's actually really hard to blur out the shadows, make them blurry. This one, there might be multiple light sources. Get something with one uh, one direct light source. This one look will probably not look cool if we use that one. I like this one here because there's obvious one light source up here and there's one shadow there being casted and so i'm going to go with this one it's a good angle here as well so i already downloaded this one i have it on my desktop just click free download and you get it um oh cool you can get a code there 50 percent off oh for iStock. stock uh sometimes it'll say here who uploaded that picture and so you can give them a shout out no attribution necessary but it is appreciated all right so to bring in the picture, I'm going to hit zero for camera view. And I'm going to click over here on the picture icon. Make sure the camera is selected. Camera selected there. You can click on the frame here or select there from up here. Um, click on the object data for the camera here on the properties panel. And then activate background images. You're going to click inside that box there, add a check mark. Expand that menu there. Click on the expand icon, a little triangle there, or carrot, whatever you want to call it. Add image. Uh, make sure that image is not in your downloads folder because from blender you will not be able to access the downloads folder so i downloaded one earlier and i put it on my desktop desktop and beautiful bloom blooming blossom that's the one i used double click and what is that there we go so i rendered this for some reason and get out of there cool so there's my image there uh, there's my mug super humongous let me try to scale it down for grab all right let me go back to the camera uh what i gotta do is change the camera resolution to be the same as the image resolution so the image is not distorted because i can tell right now it's kind of stretched out so to find that you can actually use blender to find the uh, camera um sorry the image resolution so click out, out here in the uh, editor type button and then go down to image editor right here image editor and then we have already brought the picture in so just click on this picture icon here and then select your picture there's my picture there hit the m key for nancy and you get the sidebar uh, options here click on image and there it is right there there's a resolution for it so i'm gonna go over here to output and the first one is the x the second one is the y so that's 4288 and click on the other one here 2848 there we go the other option would be to access a file in your um, in a file explorer window if you're using Windows, and then right-click the image and get the data about it. Right-click and go to properties, and then go over to details. Scroll down. There's the dimensions there for the resolution. That'd be the other the other option. But you can do that all in Blender here. Because that other one, I'd have to write it down. This one, I can just see it there. If you like, you can change the color data. I'm going to leave that one as alpha there. All right, and I'm going to go back over to the 3D viewport. 3D viewport. 
All right, I'm gonna bring in a plane. That's gonna be Shift A, Mesh, Plane. I'm gonna scale it up really big. Let me try 10. One for front view. I'm gonna put it right below the, the mug there. G, Z, bring it down. All right, there, so it's sitting on the mug. G, Z, bring it up, just the bottom of the mug there, there we go. Z for camera view, all right. I wanted to cover up the whole frame, so I'm gonna keep going. Actually, I'm gonna do something else first. I wanna position the camera, so just right, so I'll select the camera, back to camera here. And see the alpha here, I'm gonna go all the way up to one. That way you kinda of see through the picture a bit. Now I'm gonna go hit the N key, get the sidebar menu, and then click on view right here. Then I'm gonna click on lock camera to view. I'm gonna position my camera so it kinda of locks in with the image here. Let me see. Hold on shift, moving the mouse around. Me, if I can try the wireframe here. All right, there we go. And let's see there. So I went over to wireframe. And you wanna to try to position it so that the, so the mug seems to be on the table and the plane as well. You wanna to try to get the angle right. All right, let's see, solid viewport shader, wireframe, that looks about good. It's just a little tricky to see because of the camera. So I'm gonna select my mug here. And that looks like a picture, so the mug can't be as big as a picture. That'd be one giant mug. So I'm gonna scroll down. Sorry, I'm gonna scale it down, S for scale, pull the mouse down. There we go. That looks good right there. So now I'm gonna turn off the lock camera view because if I leave it on, and if I try to move around, rotate my view, it's gonna change my view here. Maybe I'll move the, the mug more this way. So I'm in G for grab, and Shift Z. That way it doesn't move up and down along the Z axis. Maybe I'll put it like right there. All right, so turn that off. That's done, that was just for positioning that. Back to rendered. All right, so now I'm gonna select my, uh, my plane here. I'm going to RZ, rotate it for scale, try to position it there, try to line it up with the top frame there. For the top edge here, I'm trying to line it up with that frame. So GZ, oops, not GZ, RZ. There we go. Now I'm going to move it that way, GY, pull it up, and about there. I'm in the tab key for edit mode. I'm going to subdivide this about 80 times. Right click, subdivide. Open the subdivide menu and number of cuts 80. I can go up higher, but now your computer might crash. So I can see here it's kind of off already. So tab key, Shift Z for wireframe, R Z, and I can try to line up the, the plane there with the Y axis. Cool. All right. So now back to uh, edit mode, tab key, edit mode. I'm going to go over to vertex or edge selection. I want to select that far edge over there. Just that edge way over there. The one at the very end. So I'm going to hold on the alternate key and left click that edge over there. Cool, I got it selected. See for camera view. I'm going to pull it up. Uh, but I wanted to pull up kind of like a, like a wave, so like a curve. Because this, uh, the angle of the picture is kind of shallow. So I can't keep expanding the, the plane and my computer might crash. So I'm going to activate the proportional editing tool here. There we go. And I'm going to hit G. Z to pull it up so it's right out of the frame just a bit and then spin the wheel so I can get this nice and round here. Not too far. You don't want the curvature to go all the way where it hits the table here because then it's going to distort the image too much. All right. I'm with the tab key. Back to object mode. Shift Z. Solid viewport shader. I want to move this over so it covers up that corner. So move it along the X there. G, X. And there we go. Cool, so the entire plane here is inside the camera frame. All right, so I have the, um, the picture there. Sorry, I have the plane selected. So I'm gonna go over to materials, new. This is gonna be the image here, the background image. I'm gonna UV wrap it onto my mesh here. So I'm gonna go down to base color. I'm gonna click on the rivet here and go down to image texture. And I already brought the image in, so I can click it here from the picture icon. And there we go. It's kind of whack. Let me hit tab key for edit mode. Let's see. 
A to select all, and then the U key, and then project from view. Project from view, there we go, project from view. Cool, there we go. So make sure you take it edit mode, U key, project from view, it'll project it from the background image. So now tab key for object mode, and there we go. So obviously it looks a little darker, so we just gotta play around with the light settings. All right, see so if I move it around, you see there it looks all distorted. That's because it's um, it only looks good in that camera view. Kind of like that chalk art you see sometimes. It's like this weird angle, but you stand on the right spot. It looks just right. All right, so I'm gonna select my light source here. And the light seems to be coming from over there. Let's see the angle. So set for top view. Angle looks to be about over there. So you notice the shadow's moving. So you wanna get the shadow just right. Oh, it's a long shadow, so maybe we'll go way out here. Cool, see where for camera view. There we go. So long shadow, I pulled the uh, light source a little farther away. Let me try sun, it's gonna be super bright. Let me go back to point, you know, just make point brighter. And increases from 1000, let me try 20,000. Uh, it's looking a little better. There's a glare over there too, and that's cool. The mug, that is in the shadow, so it should look something like that. Uh, let me do a couple other things before I start playing around with the lights anymore or further. Go over here to the render tab and you can activate blue. I'll give you that fuzzy light because there's some of that there. Let me turn off the blue. So you kind of see kind of like that fuzzy light there. So I activate the blue, get a little bit more of that. Uh, ambient occlusion, I can see it here. See the shadows here is darker than these shadows over there. Ambient occlusion. Uh, motion blur is not necessary, nothing's moving. Screen space reflections, I activate that one. And we get the nice glossy finish. Or actually, it's looking better without it. Mine's on there by default, so I have a problem with my um, my graphics card. All right, so my mug's kind of floating in the air again. One for front view, let me zoom in. So I got the form when I was moving around the plane. So GZ, bring it down. All right, zero for camera view. And there we go. All right, it's looking good. So screen reflections, I think I'll leave it off. It's a little too shiny there. Um, I can turn it back on and then play around with the colors, the material for it. So I'm just gonna turn it off. All right, so I'm gonna go back over, select the light. I can't see it from here, so I'm gonna get it from the outliner. Commit the end key that took away the sidebar menu. I don't need it. Light data menu, open shadows here. If you notice here, the shadow, it's darker than this one. And oftentimes when I see CGI, that's often the case. It's really tricky to get the shadows right. So usually the CGI object has the, uh, a darker shadow. So you can play around with the settings here. Activate contact shadows. Uh, see, increase the bias. Oh, let's see, decrease the bias. If I bring it down, I think it makes it darker. All the way up. Next, a little thinner. And see, clip start. See how far the shadow goes before I cast a shadow. Reset to default values. That doesn't always work if you do that. Uh, bias 0.03. I'm increase that. I bring it down. And it creates our shadows over there. And thickness. I'm going to settle with that. Uh, custom distance, I'll leave that alone. All right, so there it is. All right, and one last thing before you save it, in case you wanna work on it again, go to File, External Data, and activate Automatically Pack into Blend, and then you can go ahead and save it. Let's see, Michael Scott, Mug, to save. All right, then hit F12 to render, and you'll get your render here. So it's in the camera view. Get your nice mug there. Uh, good luck trying to get the shadow just right. Super tricky. If you notice here, the um, the plane that we brought it in, it's kind of like a shadow catcher, and we UV wrapped the image there. That's the um, that's what's key, and the resolution as well. But thank you for watching. Have an awesome day.